you'll see in the documentary film yeah. that they basically say to Kelly, there is a chance mm. that this operation might affect your vocal range. <laughs> Good morning to Mr. Kelly Jones. Good morning. And there's a documentary film which is going into cinemas. It is, yeah. Well, you tell us what the documentary is about, otherwise no point me having you on. I, uh, I was diagnosed with a polyp on my vocal cords and I had to have surgery uh, and then I had to do like this recovery thing for about three months where I couldn't speak. Then I could speak of, like two minutes a day, then five minutes a day and then build up to singing again. And whilst I was doing that recovery, I had the idea to do this tour. Um, so Ben's like, do you not think that should be part of the story for this documentary? And I'm like, I, I, I'm not really sure because it's quite a personal kind of vulnerable thing and he said we got any footage and i said i got loads of footage because i had to send all these recovery clips to the guy who has helped me speak and sing again uh which is quite painful to watch to be honest mm. but he did a really good um arc to his story really and he's very respectful and he, he 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 put something together and he showed me and i said if you think it's something people would you know benefit from or learn from or you know it's kind of a a personal side but the the documentary shows the the storytelling on stage which is quite funny telling stories because hindsight can offer humor to stories that were quite hard-edged at the time they happened obviously mm -hmm. um so it's a kind of make them laugh make them cry make them wait kind of documentary to be honest he's done a really good job with it you see you you didn't really tell that many people about the surgery did you no i saw it a bit like if you have a football player who has an injury when he goes back after an injury everybody goes and i don't know he's not as good as he was before mm. so i needed to kind of i did the solo tour which was very different for me i made a record with another bunch of friends called far from saints which is an album coming out next year which is a cool record for they're from austin texas amazing and obviously we did kind came out that went to number one and we did all the arena shows for the last album which was huge and we did all the global stuff actually that was all the same time mm. so i needed to kind of get it all under my belt really before telling anybody because i didn't want any added pressure saying oh yeah you do sound different and all that kind of crap so yeah it was much more about me just getting through it and then kind of i what i probably never would have told anybody if ben didn't overhear me to be honest with you it just would have been one of those things you know having that kind of surgery for a singer that i mean it's yeah. frightening to have that kind of surgery anyway i'd imagine but i mean that it in in theory that's yeah. your that's your career isn't it yeah it was quite edgy you know, I went back and forth three or four times and they said, look, it's still there. I think we're going to have to operate. And I was a bit like, it, it's only at that stage you kind of think, oh, I, I played my first live gig when I was 12 years old. Mm. Um, and I've been writing songs ever since, really. And without that, I don't really know much else what I would do, really. So, yeah, it, it does become a bit weird. And when you're doing the recovery thing, even though they've told you, look, the operation's gone well, it all looks good, blah, blah, blah. When you start doing the recovery, which he shows in the film, psychologically you start losing your bottle and you can't do things that you could do before quite easily. So it takes time to kind of have the confidence again and go through all those kind of phases of up and down and then eventually you come out the other side and then and then it's a bit like a Rocky movie by the end and I'm singing like Pavarotti. <laughs> but you'll see in the documentary film yeah. that they basically say to Kelly, there is a chance mm. that this operation might affect your vocal range. So you might not be able to get as high. It might be absolutely fine, mm. but it might affect your vocal range. Yeah. And a lot of your songs are, are very high. You've got a, yeah. a great range. Um, and then it just, it shows you the videos that you that Kelly was just saying of the recovery. And it, it's two, two things I got from watching it, Kelly, because <coughs> I didn't know, I didn't know any of this and I've known you, quite a few years now yeah is number one that he's filming himself to send to the to the vocal coach just to see where he is yeah and you he, he, he can't sing you can't get those high notes that's right yeah you basically sound like every bloke trying to sing a stereophonic song <laughs> it's not quite yeah. right it's not quite hitting out the ceiling. of tune yeah not hitting those and you can see the frustration uh in in the entire body mm. Yeah, and even just singing the first line of a song is sat with the guitar, but then you get better and better and better, and you basically—it's almost like you've said to yourself, "I am not going to end up there. I can't let this beat me. I've got to get my voice back." Yeah, you're right. I mean, going going through it, it's it's such a, a strange 
thing um, to, to even explain, really, because your bottle goes, basically. Mm-hmm. And I started doing things in, in a stupid fashion. I would walk into my room like at nine in the morning and try to sing Thousand Trees before I'd even a cup of tea. But I was never trying to sing Thousand Trees at nine o'clock in the morning in 1997. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Radio. The Chris Moyle Show.